what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my guide for lohar in rise of kingdoms now i was trying to think about what commander i should talk about next for one of my guide videos and somebody commented saying that i should talk about lohar and i decided you know what that's probably a good idea because Lohar is a very unique commander. He's a commander that you'll have the opportunity of getting within the first, I think it's week or two in a brand new kingdom. And he's very, very useful, but in a different way than virtually any other commander in the game. Now it is worth pointing out that this video was suggested to me by one of you guys, which means that I actually do take all of your suggestions seriously. So if there is a commander or question that you want me to answer in a video, please feel free to drop a comment down below letting me know. I do take that seriously and I do listen to all of your guys' suggestions. With that being said, let's talk about Lohar because you probably have heard me talk about him in passing in other videos talking about commanders and which commanders to use and focus on, which ones are good in the early game versus the later game and PvP versus PvE. If you guys know what that is, uh, PvP is player versus player pve is player versus environment which is essentially like killing barbarians and barb forts and essentially the actual you fighting the game rather than somebody else so the reason that lohar is so unique is because of one the way that you obtain lohar is a bit unique um and also his utility in the game is he's he serves a very niche role and he's actually incredibly good at that role but he's um very bad in in very in, in essentially every other way now let's talk about how you actually obtain lohar if you guys are new to the game you may be confused because he's not actually obtainable in the silver chests or the gold chests you can't buy him anywhere um the way that you obtain lohar is by participating in an event called lohar's trial um the event actually just happened in my kingdom the other day but essentially you're, you're gonna see it up here in the event calendar and it will show up somewhere uh in here and once that event goes live anytime that you kill a barbarian out on the open field they will drop lohar i think they're necklaces and you can use those items and they'll give you a variety of different goodies primarily they will give you a lot of these arrows of resistance which you will need later in the game to upgrade your watchtower so anytime that you see the lohar event go live i highly recommend participating heavily in the event for these arrows of resistance alone but on top of that you will have the chance of the necklaces that you use to drop a lohar's longbow or if you're lucky a lohar's buckler and these items if you see here it says summon the barbarian leader dauntless lohar and this one uh, is the same thing some of the barbarian leader junior lohar these troops if you summon them and i'll use one just as an example it will summon a lohar right next to your city and the only way that you can defeat this lohar is by rallying it which means in order to obtain lohar you do actually have to be in an alliance and ideally you will want to be nearby your alliance members uh, in order for you to rally them very quickly these are very easy uh, uh content this is easy content to defeat you won't need that many troops it literally tells you here 12,000 tier one units like no matter your level that is incredibly easy to uh to defeat if you can defeat it just give it a couple of days and you'll be way past these uh minimum requirements and you'll see here that they do have potential rewards so not only can you get some cool blueprints but this is how you will obtain lohar so this is how you're gonna get him in the game now once you get 10 sculptures of him you will be able to summon him and use him from there you can use a uh, universal epic commander sculptures on lohar but i highly recommend that you do not do that highly recommend that you do not do that because you will be able to get lohar in abundance for free as long as you and your alliance are participating in the lohar event and those universal epic uh sculptures can be better used on other commanders that are harder to obtain ones that you mostly will only get from gold keys or special events and things like that so that's how you get lohar you do have to participate in the event and then once the event is over um you can summon those lohar and rally them down with your alliance it will be probably better if you are the leader of an, of an alliance to 
kind of organize a time saying hey you know the low harv end ends on this day the following day at such and such time we will start to just non-stop rally lohars and try to be a little bit um you know try to be a little bit organized with it that way everybody who wants lohar can participate in the event and your entire alliance can kind of uh you know from there uh become stronger with with a army of lohars now all those tips and all that information is for brand new players um let's talk about what lohar's specific role is in the game right he is of course an epic commander so you would think that he's on par with the others however his role is very specific if we take a look at at his talent trees he has the integration tree the peacekeeping tree and the support tree now these trees are very interesting because it, it by default these are three of the worst trees for pvp uh just statistically if you look at the types of buffs that they're giving you um they're very i, I mean of course the peacekeeping tree is literally pretty much irrelevant for pvp there's very small buffs here the support tree is okay because you do have rejuvenate and cage of thorns which will do some slowing you do have some cool stuff in here but it's not as good as something like the skill tree on other commanders like sun tzu and pelagius you also have the integration tree which is a tree meant for mixed armies it's just not as optimized as a specific troop type tree so in general the integration tree is okay but it's just not it's not the best right and so right off the bat we're seeing that lohar is not optimized for pvp content we are seeing that he is really great at peacekeeping because he is a peacekeeper um you do have some useful talents in the support tree but besides that there's not that there's not a really great reason to use lohar in pvp from a talent perspective with that being said let's take a look at his skills and then you'll have a really great idea of what you're going to be using lohar for so his primary skill this is the active skill it's called overwhelming force 1000 ridge requirement deals direct damage to a single target damage factor of 450 and heals a portion of your army's slightly wounded units by a healing factor of 450 to me this active skill is very underwhelming the damage factor is incredibly low especially for the epic tier you can look at other commanders with damage factor you look at osman big damage factor you look at ulji and his damage factor is not even that impressive and it's still higher than lohar you look at herman his damage factor is 1150 you look at Boudica, her damage factor is 1000 you look at pelagius over time his damage factor is 900 you look at kusunoki over time his damage factor is what it looks like um 800 so besides belisarius who has the same damage factor but does some other really cool debuffs he's got the worst damage factor in the epic tier now he does do some healing which is interesting um every time his active skill goes off he will heal your army which is okay um that healing factor is not huge but the fact that it's guaranteed and not based off of something like if you look at pelagius for example his healing factor is 900 but it's only a 10 percent chance of it popping off if you look at uh lohar his healing factor is guaranteed every time the skill goes off but it's only 450. so you know you kind of have a little bit of, of a trade-off there you do a little bit of damage a little bit of healing it's always guaranteed to me it's more of an underwhelming force than an overwhelming force but that's just my opinion um next we have sanction increases damage dealt to barbarians and other neutral units by 35 percent so straight away this is useless in pvp but you're dealing a, a crazy high amount of damage to barbarians which is really really good we can look at somebody else to compare him to like Boudica, and her second skill only buffs it by 25 percent but it does give her 20 percent extra experience so that's useful right Yohar, lohar is going to be dealing more damage to barbarians more bonus damage to barbarians than Boudica, but she gets 20 percent experience well if we look at lohar's third skill it straight up increases experience received by all commanders in his army in his current army by 70 percent that's crazy right that's crazy if you get this skill to three points it's already better than Boudica's second skill right so this is a really really great uh, skill for killing barbarians and for other um neutral units on the map like guardians and things like that his fourth skill is called unruly blood heals some slightly wounded units by a healing factor of it's actually 1000 upon leaving battle and then once you expertise him it doubles the healing factor to 2000. now this is useful because 
that's like the high i don't know of a commander that has a higher healing factor than that i really even amongst the legendary commanders i don't know i think um constantine has a higher yeah his healing factor is insane but i think it's once an hour so there's a huge cooldown on that um i don't know any other commander that has a higher uh healing factor than this right it's just there's just not one there's just not uh besides constantine and and his massive cooldown this is the biggest healing factor in the game right this is huge now the downside is that it's upon leaving battle so if you're in a fight this skill is not going to be used at all it's only when you leave the battle that you get that massive healing healing factor so where does this land us with lohar well two of his skills so half of his skills are specifically for pve content they're for barbarians they're for guardians they're for marauders they're for all that stuff right one of his skills does some damage and some healing factor no matter what but it's it's weaker than the active skills compared to all the other epics right so that's not great and his final skill is the biggest healing factor in the game um biggest reliable one without a cooldown i should say um but you have to leave battle for it to happen so this also is not going to be useful while fighting another player so really what we're looking at is a commander with terrible pvp talent trees and uh terrible skills for pvp to match right and again you know if maybe his skills were a little bit lackluster but he had some really great talent trees then maybe you could justify it a little bit sometimes in the early game maybe um and vice versa you know maybe if his if his talent trees were, were kind of bad uh but his skills were really good then maybe you could justify it but because both of them are not good for pvp content lohar is doomed to only be ever used in pvp e now that's not a bad thing right that's not a bad thing because of this third skill 70 percent experience bonus is crazy good he has the biggest experience bonus out of any other commander in the entire game and that is not uh even to mention the extra experience that you're going to be getting from his talent tree um quick sturdy a quick study gives you an extra 15 percent experience which is great so there's a lot of great things about lohar as a peacekeeper and in fact lohar is the best peacekeeper in the game he gives you the most amount of experience he has the highest amount of bonus damage to barbarians and he has the peacekeeping tree to boot he's incredible for fighting pve content so what lohar is going to be used for is literally leveling up your other commanders that you're going to be using in pvp scenarios right like that's really what he's good for he is great for when you send out an army let me go ahead and show you guys how i have this set up um i oh, i actually can't because uh, my my cues are full here let's see there's they're not even close to coming back but regardless the way that my cues are set up is that if there's a commander that i really want to level up so right now i'm focusing on getting minamoto to 60. um that commander that i want leveled up the most i will put as secondary to lohar and it's important that lohar is a primary because he has the talent uh tree for peacekeeping so you want him to be primary because even though his skills will work no matter what in primary or secondary you want him primary because you want the curing chant you want the thoroughbreds you want the double-edged sword you also want the trophy hunter and of course you want the quick study you also will use less ap if he's got insight as well so you really want lohar to be the primary and then bring along whatever commander it is that you're focusing on leveling up and they're gonna level up much faster because of lohar and again this is useful because experience is pretty hard to come by at least from my experience i know that there are other players and even other content creators who will say that you know experience isn't that crazy like yeah you know it's rare but you could just kind of go through and fight all the guardians every single day twice a day and you know that's true the guardians do give you a ton of experience and 70 percent bonus from lohar is crazy good however that's a huge time investment not just you know um killing the barbarians but traveling around the map to, to kill as many barbarians or i'm sorry not barbarians um guardians as you can that's a huge time investment right and so to me experience is still very rare and because of that lohar's trial his passive kill is insanely good you definitely should be using lohar um you're gonna be using him throughout the entirety of the game 
so get him as early as possible i would recommend expertising him as early as possible again not using universal epic commander sculptures but just getting his sculptures from lohar's event uh, and then coordinating with your alliance to kind of rally lohars together that way you all get the rewards maybe cap the number of troops that your alliance can send to a lohar rally that way as many players can get in as possible um that's really important let's talk a little bit about equipment for him equipment is not very important for him because he is again just pve um and later in the game pve content is relatively easy there are some things like karak that get difficult but regardless I just have all gray stuff on him because he's going to be having mixed armies sometimes you're going to have a mixed army sometimes you're going to have an infantry army sometimes you're going to have a cavalry army so i just gave him all the gray equipment um i had something extra this popped a crit and i just gave it the um integration tree just so that way it would be useful on him now the savage totem is a uh is a little piece of equipment that i, I don't know what it's actually I, I don't know if this is like a trinket or whatever this is called here um whatever this slot is called i don't recall if it's an accessory or whatever but this is a unique um piece of equipment where you will actually get another 10 percent damage to barbarians so I was, I was able to get my hands on this piece of equipment and I figured why not craft it? Why not throw it on Lohar? He'll get an extra 10% anytime that there's an event that's important for killing barbs. He'll be able to kill them much faster, which means he'll sustain less damage and heal even more because of his uh, expertise. We also have another sturdy boots down here. It is what it is. These all are very basic gray equipment nothing too special there um again it's not that critical that you have equipment on lohar but if you have extra grays you might as well throw on there if you're having trouble early game killing barbarians then there you go that's that's a way to buff his um his usefulness there and with that being said you guys um there's not really much else to say about lohar only use him for pve content if you if you use him for pvp you are going to have a bad time i promise you I don't know of any special builds, any special combinations, any special anything that will make Lohar good in PvP. I just don't know. Unless there's a way to abuse this healing factor, I'm not sure. But to me, just the the lack of damage and lack of troop buffs is just an it's just a no-go. It's just don't do it. Just don't do it. It's a bad idea. Now, what I will say, a couple of other tidbits. Um, I personally think that you should max this third skill as soon as you can. Um for the most part you would want to max the first skill first and then take them up from there i think with lohar this is what makes him stand out from everybody else like yeah he does extra damage and he has healing fight whatever this is what stands him out apart from everyone else and so i would recommend um once you get lohar bring him to three stars and then start adding skills onto him and hopefully they will go into this third skill um because you know it's just these first two are pretty lackluster in my opinion and of course you know it's unlikely that you'll get a 1151 lohar so they're naturally there's going to be some skills that get upgraded here along the way anyway um but you know this is really where he shines and the sooner you start to get extra experience on your other commanders the better so i would recommend if you're focusing on lohar for early game for pve get him to three stars start to upgrade these skills and hopefully they land in this third one and then from there bring him to four stars and you know maybe you can get uh this healing factor up as well now it's probably worth noting that if i were you i would recommend probably maxing the first three skills before you work work on the fourth one probably um this healing factor is huge and it is very good but um you know this does give you a healing factor as well and you do want that bonus damage to barbs in the early game so the first three are probably more important than the fourth but the fourth is a huge too so i would focus on third skill first then finish the other two then bring them to four stars and then expertise him from there finally in terms of experience tombs i wouldn't use that many experience tombs on lohar um maybe if you're trying to get him to max this this peacekeeping tree early game maybe you want to use some some you know experience tombs on him just to speed up the rate with which he's useful at getting experience for your other commanders right because there is an opportunity cost there of keeping him at a low level for too long um so maybe in the early game you want to level him up a little bit with experience tombs just to get him there but remember you're going to be using him to level up all your other commanders which means he also gains 70 percent bonus experience and you're definitely going to be using him to fight barbarians for the rest for the entirety of the game so i wouldn't use too many experience tombs on him once you get him to like level 
you know beyond level 40 i just wouldn't consider it right i just would not consider it um because it's just it is what it is i don't think it's a good uh, good use of experience tombs and then if you are wondering about a build again the build since you're not doing pvp the build isn't that crucial but what i did is i i um first i went i'll actually just max out this tree you do want to go and grab quick study first then you want to grab trophy hunter and then you want to make your way up to i believe double edged sword and then maybe thoroughbreds at that point it doesn't really matter you want to max out this tree but i would focus on getting to trophy hunter first then i made my way over here to, to rejuvenate because on the support tree it actually instantly restores 150 rage which is really good um it's almost as good um the skill tree has a weaker version of rejuvenate but it also has feral nature which has the chance of restoring 100 rage so uh, i think the skill tree does um generate more rage than the support tree i think um from testing and that seems to be the case but this is still very good so i would make your way immediately up to rejuvenate after you finish this tree grab rejuvenate and then from there it's up to you i decided to enhance healing effects and reduce skill damage taken to kind of prolong lohar's longevity in the open field when he is going from barbarian to barbarian because you are going to be farming a ton of them in different events throughout the game um that's something to consider uh there is also the fresh recruits you could come up here and grab three percent extra troop capacity but i don't know how useful that is when you're fighting uh barbarians you know it's just whatever to me i personally think this is the best build for pve content for lohar because you do get to pop off active skills crazy um but that that's just me again really you want that full peacekeeping tree and then what you do from there is is up to you but if you want a build this is the one that i personally think is the best um <clears throat> if you guys have any recommendations let me know in the comment section below and with that being said guys we just finished covering the roaring barbarian lohar if you guys found this video useful and if you enjoyed it make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel now uh, more than ever actually the youtube algorithm really does favor likes and, and uh interaction with videos a lot more than it used to in the past so i really do appreciate everyone dropping a thumbs up on the video if you're new around here subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on that way you are notified the next time that i upload more rise of kingdoms content again comment down below any recommendations that you want me to cover any topics you want me to cover for rise of kingdoms or any questions you have about lohar or experience or barbarians or anything like that as always all my social media links are in the description below including my twitch channel where i do live stream rise of kingdoms and where i have my discord that has a rise of kingdoms section in it so if you guys want to join my discord not only will it let you know anytime i go live on twitch or post a video but you can meet other rise of kingdoms players ask as many questions as you want and i'll be there along with other people to help answer those questions for you and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching thank you all for all the support on these videos lately and i will talk to you guys again very very soon this has been omniarch peace